What's going on, VC? It's LJ, and here is a vinyl update. Before I get started, huge thanks to all the new subscribers in the past week or so. Much appreciated. Glad to have you here. And also, a big shout out to anybody that was affected recently by Superstorm Sandy. Hope anybody that felt any of the, uh, the impacts from that is doing well, and life is getting back to normal for everybody. So I have a pretty killer stack of rock, metal, or somewhere there in between over here to my right. And I'm gonna show them to you and talk about them a little bit. It's kind of what we do around here. First off, I have a couple of singles, and I never buy singles, but these two I couldn't resist. First, uh, anytime I find a box of singles, I instantly start digging for uh, the Atlantic label, because I'm always looking for Zeppelin. And I actually found it. And this is uh, the Immigrant Song, and Hey Hey What Can I Do? This is the only Zeppelin 7 inch I own, because I never find them. But what I thought was cool about this is it has the Strawberries price tag on it, and Strawberries was a local uh, music store here in the Boston area. There was a ton of them in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. They're uh, long since gone, but yours truly uh, used to shop there very, very frequently. All Christmas gift cards, birthday gift cards went to Strawberries, and uh, Rob from Boston, Panique's 1960, was a manager at, uh, at Strawberries as well. So Rob, there's a blast from the past, buddy. Uh, the second and last 7-inch, this is from uh, Raw Magazine, this is from 1989, and this is uh, kind of like an EP, it has Living Color, FM, Bad English, and Alice Cooper, and I only grabbed this because it was kind of just a bit of a rarity, like I said, it's a 7-inch, but it's one that has the, uh, the standard hole in it, and it actually plays at 33 RPM instead of 45. So as far as uh, obscurities go, kind of the rock metal thing, I thought that was pretty neat. All right, here we go. Here's the stack. All of this within the last four to six weeks, thereabouts. Uh, first is what's playing in the background. This is Thin Lizzy's Jailbreak. Uh, I've had a copy of this for a long time, but it was just miserable. I turned this up today, as a matter of fact, very, very inexpensively. The cover's not bad. Some ring wear, little spine wear but the vinyl is just stinking near mint clean. And this is such an amazing album. This is Angel from the Coast coming up right now, uh, followed by Running Back. What an album, what an album. Absolute essential, I haven't listened to this in so long. Uh, another one I found pretty inexpensively, and because it has a, a crease in the top right corner here, is uh, the Smashing Pumpkins, Siamese Dream. This, uh, I haven't even done my homework to find out if this is an original press or not. So somebody can leave a comment and let me know. This is on marble vinyl. And this was from what, 1993. This was probably one of my least favorite kind of a grunge Seattle type albums that came out around that time. But it is still good stuff. I did find it at the right price. I never would have went out of my way to own this or buy it, but when it showed up at the right price, it was uh, it was kind of a quick grab. So if you want to leave a comment and let me know, I just grabbed this today. I haven't even done my homework to see if this is an original press or not. I know it's been reissued a few times. So leave a comment. Here's a cool 70s rock obscurity. This is called Detroit. Um, this is Detroit with Mitch Ryder. Um, obviously the jacket has seen better days. This was in the dollar bin, and this kind of just, this right up my alley is just obscure 70s rock or 70s rock in general. I did give this a quick spin, very uh, cursory, and you know, it's just that. It's just flat out rock and roll from the early 70s. I haven't done any research on it. There's a pretty good write up on the back here, and uh, you know, Todd, if you're watching, it actually says the bass player for Catfish came to play on this album. So it should give you an idea of what it sounds like. Very cool stuff. Uh, here is Streetwalker's Red Card. I don't think I've shown this yet. This is from 76, and it's kind of on the softer side of hard rock. It's not really bombastic. It's definitely rock, and it has a kick-ass cover. This was in uh, my uh, video for uh, Mibber Tube when I was kind of flashing a slideshow of albums. And this was just super cool because when I picked it up in the store, I couldn't help but recognize a very young uh, Nico, uh, Iron Maiden's drummer, on the back. Very cool, doesn't sound like Iron Maiden though. Here's uh, Ronnie Montrose, Open Fire. This is from what, 1978? Not bad uh, as far as Montrose albums go. You know, Montrose's first couple albums are just Hallmarks, Watersheds. 
This is all right. It's moving towards kind of that 80s AOR sound, but still really good stuff. <laughs> Here's a funny story. So two vinyl community members go digging. Uh, and <laughs> Aaron, Mr. Bizarro, and uh, Polly Walnuts, they go out digging. Aaron posts the video on his page, and I was watching him dig, and I watched him. How many of us have watched people thumb through albums and kind of got that, <gasps> grab it, <gasps> I can't believe you passed that by, I hope you already have it kind of thing going on. Well, let me tell you, man, Aaron went right past Badlands, and <laughs> I had a heart attack. I uh, rewound Aaron's video back to the beginning, and where he said what store he was in, called the store, <laughs> and told him a friend had just been there. Uh, I know you have this album. If it's still there, can you grab it? I'll pay for it, ship it to me, and here it is. So I sent uh, Aaron uh, a PM, and he thought that was just the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> I've gone virtually digging with him. But anyways, here's Badlands, uh, Ray Gillen, Jakey Lee, Eric Singer, who of course would go on, he's currently uh, the drummer for KISS. Uh, here he is with his uh, Catman makeup on, years and years later. This one, 1989. And I'm just so happy to have this in the collection. It was awesome. Awesome, they were super cool about shipping. I think it wound up being like six bucks. Wound it up, wound up. Uh, here is a couple of Grails. Uh, I've been chasing these for a long time. First, this is Babylon AD. This is their uh, self-titled LP from 1990, 1989. Um, Babylon AD was probably one of the last really, really good, talented hair metal bands. Um, they did the video thing for uh, Robocop with the song The Kid Goes Wild, and Robocop is like targeting them, and Guns N' Roses would later completely rip off that idea for You Could Be Mine, which was totally not their idea. Babylon AD did it first. But this is a stellar album, and it's a bitch to find. A bitch to find in the U.S. Uh, Bang Go the Bells, Caught Up in the Crossfire, The Kid Goes Wild. There's not a weak track on this, and it's something that I've been chasing down for at least a few years now. I'm super happy to have this. Um, I have it on CD and cassette as well. Anybody that's chasing down and wants to uh, wants the challenge of finding a great, great, great hair metal album, it's one of the last really good ones, give it a shot. They're very talented. It's a killer album. Another grail, and I've had this probably for, I don't know, a couple of months now, is Night, uh, Death Angel's 1990 release, Act 3. I don't think I've shown this in, uh, in a metal update. This is another one that I chased down for quite a while. Finally found a copy inexpensively. I know I would have George, American Music Pickers, kind of sending me a PM anytime he saw a copy or shooting me a text message anytime he found a copy. And I finally found one at the right price. It tends to get up there in terms of price, but this one's in great shape. I was able to get a great deal on it, and I'm super happy to have it. Fantastic. It's uh, Death Angel for me kind of straddles the thrash power metal line. It's too melodic to be pure thrash, but not thrashy enough to be Slayer, if you know what I mean. Um, it's kind of a, a minor grail as well. Here's Wasps, the Headless Children. This doesn't show up very often at all. This is another one that's just an absolute nightmare to find. Um, probably based on time period. This is from 1989. I think this is one of Wasp's really last great albums. Um, Crimson Idol, I think, is really good, but after that, it got a little silly for me, as many of them did in the 90s. So here is The Headless Children, Happily Home. Again, it's one that took just years, you know, to get a really good deal on and find a really nice copy. I'm very happy with that. I did have quite a few questions. I had um, Kill 'Em All on the shelf behind me uh, over here in a recent video, and a lot of people asked if it was an original press. Um, it is. It's an original Canadian press on Electra, and this is part of a trade that I had done with uh, Dr. Deadwax, Mark, quite a long time ago. So just wanted to throw that out there and share that with folks, and at the same time, why the hell not, because I finally picked up the, uh, the reissues. I have an original American press, U.S. press of that as well, but I recently found the, uh, the Half Speed Master reissues for both Ride the Lightning and Kill Em All pretty inexpensively, so I went ahead and picked them up. Um, with original presses of both and the Canadian press of Kill Em All, I just don't want 10 presses of the same album. But when they turned up at the right price, I figured, why not? I'll go ahead and grab them. They sound great. They're great albums. And here is uh, the label, at least, on Ride the Lightning. And you have a, a gray label on Kill Em All, which I'm not going to show. 
and they come with an insert. I, I thought they did a good job with these. These are 180 gram, they're heavyweight. Really nice presses, they sound great. And here's the insert, which kind of uh, mimics the original US press inner sleeve. So it was really cool to finally have those in the collection. You know, my original US presses I've had for quite a while. They're not in bad shape by any means. They play great, but they're just, they're not crisp, fresh, brand spanking new. And, uh, and these work. So those were cool to find. This is worth showing <laughs> for a couple of reasons. So this is David Lee Roth's um, Crazy From The Heat. It's an essential for the Van Halen collection. I already have a copy of this, but this turned up sealed with the, uh, the California Girl Shrink uh, sticker, hype sticker on it, and the remnants of a Good Vibrations price tag, which is another blast from the past as far as um, Massachusetts area record stores go. And um, this was in the same box, and it was Journeys Raised on Radio, same Good Vibrations remnant, sealed, again, same thing. Um, the shrink seems like it's pulling the corner up, so I'm not sure it's warped. It was just a cool find. The next two come from um, being the winner in Peter's contest, E.L. Peter's 100 subscribers contest with uh, Show Your Animals. And this is Electric Wizard Come My Fanatics. This is one I never owned from 1996. I've seen it a few times on vinyl. It tends to be pretty pricey in the States, so I never picked it up. I'll go ahead and show you that. But uh, this was cool. The cover, more than anything, has always grabbed me. And when Peter said, you know, you won my contest, I was super excited. I was super happy to have made a video for him. But uh, at the same time, it was a great chance to get this into the collection. It's something I've wanted for a long time. I've never owned, I've never been big into the, excepting Black Sabbath, the old Doom Metal resurgence. And this is, you know, for me, that's where this fits. And man, it's a fantastic album. I absolutely love it. Peter, thank you so much. Uh, definitely a huge welcome addition in the collection. And man, I'm happy to have been a winner in that contest because it was a great chance to honor you. Um, Peter also included a copy of a Dutch compilation. So this is either a Betten or Baton 81. Peter had sent me a cassette along similar lines not long ago. And it's just a, a compilation of Loverboy, Russ Ballard, Styx, Judas Priest, Ario Speedwagon, 38 Special, Toto, uh, Nugent. So cool stuff just from that day and age in 81. And it's just neat to see what music and what tracks made it over to Europe. Um, all right, one more grail. I promise you, I know I'm throwing that word all over the place tonight, but here's one I've been looking for for a long time, and it's uh, Judas Priest's Painkiller. This is the Back on Black reissue. I believe this was a UK only press. And heavyweight, 180 gram vinyl. If I'm not mistaken, this was limited to a thousand copies. And this is another one that it took, it took some time to, to find a, a nice copy at a good price. It can be tremendously difficult to track down. Very cool custom labels. And this for me is just one of Priest's absolute best albums. I can remember being a freshman in high school when this came out. It blew me away and coming hot off the heels of Price what? Turbo and ram it down. This was just like, wow. Priest is back and man, they are here to play and compete with the big boys. So this was just a fantastic album and, and it's one that really took it took a lot of patience. I had come across this more than once and the pressing, you know, something wrong with the jacket or a nick on the record, whatever, and the person still wanted 50 to 60, 70 bucks for it. So it took a while to really hunt down a rock solid copy at a really decent price and I'm just tickled pink to own it. Awesome album. Awesome album. The pink and the last one, this was, uh, I'm just going to show it again because I love it and I've been listening to the hell out of this thing. This is Restless and Wild by Accept. And this is an album that I had mentioned to, uh, to Todd Greeno that I was looking for. It's on Portrait. And it can be tough to find in good shape for a fair price. And Todd mentioned he found it in near mint shape for what I thought was a very fair price. So it was my pleasure to uh, kick Todd some lunch money. And Todd kicked me the album. And there it is. That's gonna do it for this update. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a comment. Everybody pick yourself up a copy of Thin Lizzy's Jailbreak and I'll talk to everybody soon. Ciao.